Hi and welcome to Drummer's Review. I'm Nolly and today we're going to be looking at a selection of hoops to see what difference they make to your snare sound. Our test snare today is a 14 by 6.5 inch Joyful Noise TKO brass snare and it's outfitted with an Evans G1 batter head. We started with the drum stock hoop which is a heavy duty solid brass triple flange hoop before moving to a standard 2.3mm steel triple flanged hoop. There was a die cast steel hoop, an S hoop also made out of steel, before finally moving to a wood hoop made out of walnut. We love doing these kinds of comparisons at Drummers Review because you can go online and read thousands of opinions, but there's no substitute for hearing for yourself and making up your own mind. On that note, let's listen to a few more examples and come back for some discussion afterwards. Starting with the solid brass triple flanged hoops, these are very heavy and had a long bell-like sustain when tapped. This character shone through once on the drum, giving a wet and rich sound, plenty of beef on the attack, especially with rim shots, as well as a kind of overall warm character. The regular steel triple flange hoop was also on the more open end of the spectrum, with plenty of sustain, but not quite as much overtone emphasis as we heard on the brass hoop. As the most common type of hoop out there, they feel extremely familiar to play on, with a well-balanced sound that doesn't pack any surprises. When tapped, the die-cast hoops had a very noticeably shorter sustain when compared to the triple flange ones. And this bore out when fitted to the drum, giving a shorter voice, a more pronounced attack, and a little bit less mid-range projection. It makes sense that die-cast hoops are often the choice of players playing louder music styles who want a bit more of a cutting and dry voice. The S hoop had an extremely short sustain, even more so than the die-cast hoop, which took us by surprise. With the inward facing top flange presenting a lower profile above the drum, it does take a little bit of adjustment time in order to be able to accurately and consistently catch rim shots and cross sticks. 
Sonically, the S hoops were focused, retaining more of the mid range than the diecast had, but at the same time presenting quite a dry voice. It's easy to see why these are marketed as a kind of in between. We're also keen to hear the S hoops on toms, particularly to replace uh, triple flange hoops if those are on there, because we think the shorter voice, especially on the batter side, could be cool without changing the voice too much. And additionally, since it's not that normal to play rim shots on your toms, you're probably not going to notice much change in feel there. Finally, the walnut hoop, while sounding like a wood block when tapped, actually translated to quite a wet snare sound once installed. There's loads of attack to rim shots, and overall the drum had a little bit less beef than it had when we had the metal hoops installed. We noticed that the wood hoops generated a little bit less body than the metal hoops did, and additionally there was a ton of attack for the rim shots, which might surprise some people. The more organic rim click character that you get from a wood hoop is always going to be a draw to drummers that use cross stick techniques regularly. And it's worth noting that while our hoop is made out of walnut, there are different kinds of woods out there that people use for making hoops that will all have a slightly different sound to them, so it's worth experimenting with. While triple flange hoops are very much the norm for most drummers, perhaps many don't realise quite how much sustain they're getting, especially on deeper drums, and they might be trying to control that through the use of muffling. In those situations, it's definitely worth looking into how a diecast hoop might dry up the sound in a pleasant way, or perhaps looking at an S hoop if you wanted to retain the mid-range content of your drum. On the other hand, if you want a more classic open sound from a drum that currently has diecast hoops fitted, you might be pleased by the difference if you were to move to a triple flange hoop that allow the drum to breathe a little bit more. Wood hoops might be typically associated with lighter playing styles, but perhaps listeners might be surprised to hear just how aggressive they can sound when they're laid into and definitely shouldn't be overlooked for most people's snare drum collections. It's worth noting that when tuning, the stiffer S hoops and die casts can be a little bit more frustrating since adjustments made to one lug tend to have a greater impact on the surrounding lugs as well. You should find though that once you've leveled out the head, you're able to crank it down more without choking and also that the head's going to maintain its pitch a little bit better as you play on it. We hope that this comparison has been interesting and informative and we'd love to know your thoughts too, so please leave us a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to get more content in the future and I'll see you next time at Drummer's Review.